My name is Mary Alice Krim. I'm the field director for Free Press and the Free Press Action Fund. ISPs or internet service providers, companies like Comcast, Verizon, and AT&T, um, have time and time again pushed their boundaries. They want to charge us more for the same products. They want to tell us what we can and can't do on the internet. Um, and they want to have a lot of control over our online lives. So it's actually very important that they have a watchdog that the Federal Communications Commission, as well as the Congress, who oversees the agency, can um, really be involved and be um, able to intervene on behalf of internet users everywhere. I think that we're pretty concerned because um, the big internet companies have said that without net neutrality protections on the books, they will charge us more, they will degrade and slow down our services, they will even possibly censor and determine what can and can't be out there. Um, Verizon at one point said that they thought that they had editorial power over the internet, for example. Um, we've seen in the past that their misdeeds have caused a lot of problems. Um, we've seen a Canadian company who um, blocked access to a server that was hosting a website that had um, a union strike against the telecommunications company. Um, really bad business. Um, we've also seen um, the companies on the record in court say that if it wasn't for net neutrality protections that used to exist, they would be experimenting with charging us more to access the same content or applications that we use now without having to pay more. Really, honestly, the only people who are against net neutrality are working with the big companies, Comcast, Verizon, AT&T. Um, and that includes the FCC chair, Ajit Pai, who used to be a lawyer for Verizon. Um, so their concerns quote unquote concerns are that net neutrality is bad for business, that it's harming investment. Um, and Free Press has done original research that has debunked that numerous times. It's simply not true. Um, in the time between 2015 and 2017, where that Federal Communications Commission had strong net neutrality protections on the book, investments actually increased. Um, we have all kinds of information about that at freepress.net that folks can read. Um, so ultimately, this comes down to the bottom line. Um, these big companies want to charge us more. They want to have more control over our lives, tell us what we can and can't do on the internet. And um, everyday people, pretty much everybody else, <laughs> supports net neutrality. Um, the lawmakers who are in opposition to net neutrality have taken a lot of money from um, these big corporate players who spend tons of money in Washington, DC. Um, a couple of years ago, Comcast, for example, was the second largest lobbying spender in DC, just behind Northrop Grumman, which is a military industrial complex spender in Washington. I think the number one thing to do is to find out where your member of Congress stands on the issue. Um, that's super important. Find out their stance. You can go to battleforthenet.com, which is a website that's tracking all of our federal legislators' stances on the issue. Um, once you find out, call them. If they support net neutrality, say thank you. If they don't, tell them why they should. Um, after you make that phone call, visit their offices. Um, I think that sometimes we forget that members of Congress work for us, the people who put them in office, and they're responsible to um, do things that we support. So drop into their offices, say hello, get to know their staff. Um, everyone should be able to be connected to a fast, affordable, open, and surveillance-free internet.